In this problem, we'll examine the two degree of freedom system, and in particular, we'll take a look at how to set up the equations of motion. So we have two masses, M1 and M2, and these are riding along a frictionless surface. The masses are connected to one another by a linear spring of constant K2, and mass 1 is connected to the wall with a spring of stiffness K1. Put in some coordinate systems here, so this will be X1, mass 1, and this will be X2. The first thing we need to do is free body diagrams of each of the masses. We'll start off with mass number 1. The free body diagram of mass 1 looks like this. Um, if I displace it to the right by an amount x1, I will get a force by the spring in this direction, k1 times x1. I'll get another force here equal to k2 times x1 minus x2. Take a second to convince yourself that's right. And then by Newton's second law, says that MA, which in this case is M1, X1, double dot, is equal to the sum of the forces. Because the forces are to the left, but X1 is to the right, there'll be a negative sign, negative K1, X1, negative K2, X1 minus X2. And I'll rewrite this as M1, X1, double dot, plus K1 plus K2 times x1 minus k2 x2 equals 0. That is your first equation of motion. Then looking at mass 2, we see just an equal and opposite force on this side, which we'll call k2 as before, x1 minus x2. The only difference is the sign of the arrow now. Uh, and doing Newton's second law again on mass number 2, we find that we get m2x2 double dot is equal to, positive sign this time, k2x1 minus x2, which we'll rewrite as m2x2 double dot plus k2x2 minus k2x1 is equal to 0. That's equation number 2. And I can combine these using uh, matrix notation as M1, 0, 0, M2, times X1, double dot, X2, double dot. That's a vector plus K1 plus K2 minus K2 plus K2 plus K2 times the x vector x1, x2 equals 0. We'll call that equation 3. Just to make some more space. So finally we can write it in this form. m x double dot, and I'll write it now explicitly of t k x of t is equal to 0, where x of t is simply the vector x1 of t and x2 of t. By inspection, we can see that m is equal to m1, 0, 0, m2. Similarly, K, our K matrix, K1 plus K2 minus K2 minus K2, oops, K2. And this would be subject to initial conditions, something like X of 0, oops, is equal to some initially known position vector X0. And similarly, the first derivative of the velocity at time 0 is equal to some vector v0. So in the next video, we'll figure out how to solve this equation of motion, or these equations of motion, I should say, as shown in number 4 above. 
subject to the initial conditions 5 and 6. Thank you very much. That's it. And uh, if you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. It will really help.